uh, this pallet about an hour ago had a new attachment for the milling machine. So let's go and have a look. Step over this ridiculous box containing my new rotary table. Uh, here we are. Uh, I think further back. This is a slotting head for the Bridgeport Mill. Uh, really, I should go around to the side and show. You can see at the moment it's upside down. Uh, I lifted this thing, which is not the lightest object in the garage. Uh, obviously it's not the right colour either. It's made by another company other than Bridgeport. But uh, it has an adjustable fitting. Uh, which I can show you. See the back of the Bridgeport ram, as you can see, is like that. And the fitting, I never knew this until this arrived. I thought this was one solid piece and it just was a perfect fit for the Bridgeport and nobody would bother making anything else that was any different. But it, you can see it's on a dovetail, which I thought was quite kinky. The other side of which has got two cap screws that lock that in place to wherever you need it to be. So that maybe this is designed to fit quite a number of machines. Um, it certainly fits the Bridgeport. But of course nothing ever goes quite so smoothly. And this bolt, which you can't really see anymore now, inside there, was a three quarter inch bolt. Uh, straight shank and just threaded from where the green bit starts going down. It wouldn't fit through the ram uh, straight away so I had to get one of these silly sponged um, thingamajiggies they just sand away, it's really for wood but I thought there might be just a bit of muck in that hole there I just went round a few times for about half an hour and it seemed to fit just needed tapping down eventually uh, the only thing now is I certainly don't have a spanner big enough to turn that thing and that has to be tightened up, so what I'm going to have to do is never straightforward. Picked up this piece from a steam rally a long time ago, uh, probably for about 50p, something daft. And what I'll do is I'll just attach two bits of metal like that to it um, and make myself a spanner. So that's obviously something else I've got to build today, shouldn't take too long. But as you can see, this is, it does look a bit strange when it's upside down. Uh, nice three-phase plug which will go straight into there instead of the normal milling quill. So, the easiest way for me to actually mount this to the bridge port was to rotate the whole ram round and stick this end as close to the table as I could find it winch the table up until this bracket here was just at the right height and I could just uh, move it into place then. Uh, I never thought of that until about an hour ago and of course once it's on there uh, you just loosen these, well they're already loose you loosen these and swing it back into place um, so yeah so it looks very very sound, it was as heavy as anything to lift um, I had a, a bit of a struggle moving it from down where the pallet is over there, but uh, I got it there eventually, no problem. It took a few seconds, but I wouldn't like it to do it many times in a row. Once was enough. I'm dying to get this thing working, because I need to put a very accurate key in the uh, new motor coupling, which I'm in the progress, in the process of... Uh, getting going so yep next time you see this it should be all secure whether I make a video of my welding skills I probably won't we'll see well I've removed a large nut from underneath uh, the slotting head ramp so that I can gauge how far I need to uh, put these blocks apart now the original idea was to do this um, but as you can see it's going to be a bit cumbersome so I think what I might do is save one of these cut this in half and then put one piece there 
in one piece there. And that will be much more efficient than this. All we really need to do, really, I think. I think it will be enough uh, for flat coverage on there. That's all we need. Uh, and then there will still be enough handle left here, once half of that's cut away, to make a reasonable tool. Um, so that's the next thing to do, is cut this in half with the uh, grinder. Right, well, the spanner is made. The welding, as you can see, is pretty dreadful. Well, I managed to get the slotting head on. Uh, but I can't swing it round as much as I had hoped for. Uh, because something I didn't actually think about was that because the motor is not on the same centre as the rotation of the main ram, <laughs> when it spins round, it hits that light fit in there, uh, which my dad put up uh, quite a few years ago now. Uh, but there is a good amount of space behind that. There's a few electric cables in the way, but I'm sure I can move that back a little bit. But uh, we'll have to see. So I've just got to move these lights now, which are probably a bit too far forward anyway. But anyway, so let's have a go. Right, well, here we have the slotting head. Uh, you can't see most of it, it's up there. But uh, this is the business end of it. Uh, obviously, again, I don't know if this is going to focus in. Uh, probably not. Probably not for my hand there, perhaps. There you go. Now, you'll see I've put some kind of relief onto that cutting edge. Now, at the first instance, I didn't put that on. So obviously, when this tool is vertical like that, if I can do that, um, it would have been straight across. You know, the cutting surface would have been flat, no rake angle, uh, as it were. Um, but you can see a slight close-up of what I did. I got a roll of a piece of metal and cut the channel into that, and then just haphazardly welded it back on. Not the world's best welder, as you can see especially with flux cord wire and I put a couple of grub screws in the end so that seems to be okay, it holds steady okay well I'm zoomed into the vice now, you can't see the slot in it I don't think, oh you can just see the bottom of it there uh, it's not going to cut on the first pass down, I'm just going to make sure it's not going to ram into the bottom I've not moved the table or anything so I'm pretty sure it'll be okay uh, right, better set the thing going. So, we're on a bit more travel than we need. Um, we'd better see if we can get a little bit cut. Now, if this jams, I've got to um, act very quickly and turn the motor on. Yeah, there you go. There's a jam. You don't want that. So I think... No, that's not going to move. <laughs> um, I think what's going to be in order is if I mount it the other way around. Because I don't think it's ever going to work like that. Okay. The tool to go down a bit. I don't 
think we'll have much success that way at all. I mean, it's pity that, because otherwise, what is the point in having a clapper box? Hmm, very peculiar. Oh well, not the end of the world. It certainly cuts slots usually the other way. <laughs> um, I will tighten it up in this direction. Uh, rather than moving everything. Oh, I'll set the relief angle and see how it cuts. Doing that, I think. Really don't know what the point in this spring mechanism is then. If anybody else knows, I'd love to know myself. Drop me a few comments. <laughs> uh, this moss rigid there. So we've got no nothing on there now, no flex. Well not flex, but there's no spring action there now. So we're gonna try and go in again. Let's see if we do all that. have to lift the table back a bit more. Make sure the tool goes beyond. It's worth a while doing a few practice cuts like this before cutting a major bit of work like the motor coupler because I can't have any mistakes on there. Bit the tool just going beyond now. So I think we're alright. Yeah. So when it's solid like this without any travel, they seem to get the better results. Uh, shouldn't jam at all now. Has the potential to jam if I feed too much in, in one go. But uh, I think what I will do... Big burr there at the moment, which I had to try and get rid of. It's going to cop things up for a while. Right, where's my little file? Here we See, when it jams, it creates a big chunk. And trying to slot that will not be very successful, so i better get rid of that. Just creates a little burr. Yeah, so... I certainly haven't figured out why they have this clapper mechanism on here. If it makes a good enough cut when it's you know solid and not able to move, I can't really see the point in having a clapper mechanism. Otherwise, perhaps it's used when it's at a different angle. I'm not really sure. Um, it's confounded me. I know that. So let's have another go. For the sake of proving it works, I think we've uh, got a reasonably good example of it. Now to time it so that it stops on the up channel. There, I think. So yeah, that's well and truly out of the way. So we have cut quite a nice slot there. So here's our 8mm key, which I hope the camera is focusing on quite nicely. And um, if we try and put that in there, a little bit stiff perhaps. Uh, maybe the it's cut at an angle inside the metal. I'm not really sure. There's a little bit of a nick on this key somewhere, and that's probably why it won't go in. Oh yeah, I had the nick. A little bit of a nick there. So if I put it in there, it's quite nice. Quite a nice fit. It should just drop out, but of course these things never do. But, uh, I'll have to inspect the quality of the cut. This might. I didn't really see if this was, uh, you know, not. You, know, you can't really see the head at the moment. But if I zoom out a little bit, oop, other way full. Um, I never really made sure that this was precisely on key. So the slot that it's cut, even though it looks flat. May not be. <laughs> so, 
It can certainly cut a slot though, quite nicely. Um, and I imagine that the only reason why I'm having a bit of difficulty here is because maybe the tip on the tool isn't perfect. Or it's uh, cut at an angle inside the middle. But other than that, it's done a pretty good job. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. So, if you ever get one of these things, at least you know they can do the job. Now, well, I've taken the bit of metal out of the vise, and if we just bring it closer up to the camera, hopefully it'll focus in. You can see that when I did the cut, I don't know how well you'll see it, these are the first two. And you get quite a nice fit in that one. Uh, make sure that little nick on the key isn't there, so that's quite a nice fit. You can see it's uh, down to the bottom. Uh, this one, however, if not really, I don't think you're going to be able to really see. It is at a slight angle. You're spending, instead of the slotting head coming down and cutting, uh, I had not rotated it to the right angle and it was probably slightly out. So that's probably why this one doesn't fit in there quite nicely. Um, but it is all the way to the bottom, but on this side. It's a bit uh, out, as they say. So, I don't think we're going to have much joy with the tool being set like that. So, really we need to just rotate the head uh, around and um, make sure it's at the right angle. Best to do all these checks now before you start using a proper piece of work that you can't put the metal back on. So, uh, that is slightly infuriating.